Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us today. Um, we're really great that you can join us. Um, it would be great if you could firstly introduce yourself and tell us about the nature of your business. No, no trouble at all. It's um, great to be here. Thank you very much for um, inviting me on to, to do this with you. Um, I'm Chris, Chris Giddens, founder and CEO of Unicodo. Um, we're a coin-based business and we, uh, we provide e-commerce technology, um, digital marketing e-commerce technology to big e-commerce companies, so shops that sell online, to help them do um, much more advanced and sophisticated marketing campaigns using voucher codes. So voucher codes are you know, what pretty much everyone uses nowadays to, to buy things online, to get an extra discount when they're buying things online. It's a marketing tactic that shops and retailers use online to get customers to buy. And we provide some technology so that they can do that much more effectively, sophisticated, uh, um, and just in a much more advanced way. Brilliant. Thank you for telling us a little bit more about yourself. And just in terms of how you've been finding things over the last three months, it'd be good to understand how lockdown has impacted your business if it has at all and how you and the team are finding things at the moment yeah obviously we've our office in Croydon has been you know closed for the last few months um we're based out of Sussex Innovation in the Innovation Centre in the, the one Croydon or 50p building in Croydon um and um you know Saffron and the team there you know obviously had to make the the difficult decision to kind of suggest that the companies weren't to, to be working from the offices and um, so we, we took the decision for the team to all be moving to, to work from home um, and I think that that's that's obviously been a sort of a practical challenge of, of running the company in, in lockdown it's been quite fun and exciting but I guess the the big big aspects big impact we've had is um, just a, a general pressure on the business from our clients who who have um, are quite extensively in the travel industry. Um, we work with big travel operators, hotel chains, and um, uh, big online booking, um, online travel agents and uh, um, travel operators. And you know, all of them have challenges right now. Not, aren't able to sell holidays, um, or weren't able to sell holidays at the start of, uh, or in the middle of March, when every, all these restrictions came into place. Um, and the consequence of that is that all of them don't really want to spend on marketing at that particular point in time. So they start having you know, difficult conversations with suppliers like Unicode. So we've had everything from um, you know, cancellations. Uh, we've had our clients ask for pauses in contracts um, and, you know, just invoices slowing down and being paid. So all of that has a knock on effect to cash flow. Um, but also also revenue for the business. So we've we've had a bit of a, a difficult time because of that. We were about to hire three new members to join the team, but we had to kind of um, stop that. And unfortunately, they'd, they they were about to start with us, so have, um, have needed to find jobs elsewhere, um, which wasn't an, a nice position to be in. And we weren't able to sort of furlough them and take advantage of that, that scheme for them. Um, so we had to let those guys go and, um, and and luckily most of those have found opportunities elsewhere but yeah I mean those are kind of the big impacts for us really is, is, is those things. Of course it's a very challenging time for, for everyone at the moment um, and given what you just said Chris what measures have you had to put in place I guess to, to survive during these times? Um, well, most important thing is just keeping the team together, really, and making sure that they can be up and running and productive from home. So, um, you know, we 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 expected it a lockdown and a restrictions from working from offices to come. So we we had a practice day of working from home where we sent everyone home. We said basically don't come into work tomorrow because we're going to have a practice from working from home and try to get everyone's feedback on on what that experience was like. And you know, the obvious things came up were you know like the dining room table isn't the most comfortable place to work or um, I really need an extra keyboard and a mouse and another display or monitor to make a software engineer more productive and and things like that so we learned to, we had our practice day from working from home and then um, on a Thursday and then on the Monday or the kind of or Monday about 10 days later all the restrictions kicking kicked in so so we knew sort of straight away people knew what they needed to take home um, and and have uh, in their home environment um, I've been moving monitors up the country to colleagues who've gone home to spend time with family, um, to have lockdown with family. So I kind of stuck monitors in the back of my car and delivered them to 
to random train stations up and down the country to meet staff <laughs> so they could pick up their their monitor so they could work more effectively so things you know just taking some practical practical steps um and obviously on the client side of things for unicoder we've you know we've taken you've got to take some decisions on on one by one with each client on what's the best approach to to help them through the situation to make sure you've got some goodwill at the end of it so that they come back to you you know if they um you know have had to you know pause their contracts or cancel their contract even want them to come back there will be a need to have holidays and hotels and flights being booked again that that confidence will come back to the economy and consumers so we want them to come back to us and need our help and services in a few months time or whenever it is um so we get them back as a customer so it's like um you know having a pause or an end of contract in an amicable way so that they they come back in in a positive way and in when the time's right um and yeah and i think when all of these challenges were happening um i also started thinking about well how can we take our technology and use it to help you know or find another use of our technology during the times of coronavirus um, so we looked our, and looked at our technology, which is a promotion engine, a way to generate voucher codes, turn them on, turn them off, expire them once they get they get used. So we took that technology and thought, how can we supply that to you know, maybe small businesses, independent businesses that aren't typically Unicode's clients, and help them use vouchers and voucher codes as a way of you know having some confidence in their business over these these tougher times. And what we came up with was a piece of technology on top of Unicode's promotion engine to generate voucher codes. And those voucher codes create are associated with voucher values so that when a customer, a customer can or a business can sign up, you know, your local pub can sign up to the four local service at fourlocal.uk, sign up, create themselves a listing for their business and then sell vouchers. That can be um, that customers can buy for a certain value, that can be used when that business reopens again. So it's great for those hairdressers that have been shut, pubs, restaurants, cafes, um, any business that's that's had to close their doors. You know, we've been able to give them a marketing tactic and a tool to use uh, to to help them get a little bit of revenue now, but also you know have a way of still communicating with their customers and and having a conversation with their customers about deals offers promotions and incentives for those customers to keep buying again from them in the future when they are able to reopen again so you can buy that voucher now to spend when they reopen or you could get an offer or a deal or a promotion to spend or use when and that business reopens so back in so we we got that idea started in in um, in april um as restrictions were all starting to happen we've got a team of engineers on board to get that proposition up and running that sounds like an absolutely fantastic initiative. Um, I'm sure there are some challenges that you've faced on that journey. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and, and where you guys are now, really? Yeah, so there's a few, there's a technical, technical challenges and then there's the go-to-market challenges. So the technical challenges are building a platform from scratch. We had some technology that we could use, but essentially it's a platform built from scratch. So we had to get some engineers on board to actually do that. You know, first of all, we had to you know find the money to invest in that project. Um, you know, we sort of got that money, put it aside, and go right. There's a there's a budget for this. Let's give this a go. Let's see where we can take this. Um, then we sort of selected some external developers to actually help us. We've got some good contacts in the industry there, and one of our close suppliers and partners helped us with that. Um, so we then got a team up and running, uh, four engineers to build the platform. Um, and you know very rapidly we were able to build a kind of a an mvp a minimum viable product to get the technology out there um and um within within about three weeks we had a, a piece of technology out there that allowed businesses to sign up list their business and sell vouchers then it's about improvements and solving all the problems we saw and the bugs and um the um uh, the improvements we needed to make based on client feedback and the customers and the businesses that were coming on board to to try and to use the technology gave us lots of feedback um and you know just sort of going out to our network of um of contacts and getting you know, getting people to try things and getting people to to kind of um test it and make sure the technology was working and um 
your own colleague Neil was a, was a great person for feedback, um, Neil Williams. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and I sort of sent it across to him and he sort of gave some good constructive feedback around improvements we could make. All of that goes into the platform and, and got it to where it is today. But all along during that period, the next, the next big challenge for us was going to market. How, how do we find and how do we communicate to the small independent businesses when they're shut? Um, when chances are they're not picking up the phone or not answering emails. So you now we started sort of um, approaching businesses um, having a referral sort of scheme within or referral system in, within the four local platform. We um, also went and started going out to industry bodies um, and organisations and um, local business improvement districts and, and, and obviously Croydon Council um, to try and get some support. Uh, and just to get the message out there, uh, because of Unicode's background within voucher code marketing, we were able to use some of the relationships that we had with the big voucher code publishers. So my voucher codes um, and um, the Daily Mail voucher code site all did some marketing campaigns for us and gave us some support and got the message out there to their audiences. You know, obviously a whole load of deal hungry, savvy shoppers um who shop regularly online and, and search around for promotions and, and codes and vouchers you know we were able to get a message out there to to, to um you know tell to tell them about the four local uh, proposition um and you know we're now with um around 700 businesses listed um who who have been kind of referred by uh, customers searching for them um and then um, I think it's pushing sort of 50 or 60 businesses that have signed up and listing their promotions, deals and offers. Um, and yeah, so the big challenge has been getting those businesses on board and that go-to-market strategy. Uh, we've worked with a PR team, uh, a PR team we had got on board and they were great at getting the message out there to mainstream press. Was able to get some coverage on local radio and, and local press and um, um, and quite a lot of internet content, you know, linking back to us and, and talking about for local in the Guardian and the Metro um, and many other sort of publications, which was brilliant, brilliant coverage to get. Um, all about driving traffic and driving driving noise and getting some noise out there about about the for local proposition. Um, and yeah, so it's it's kind of a mixture of a lot of things that's helped us to get where we where we are and. Um, and now things are starting to reopen again. It's it's uh, it's taking on kind of itself into a bit of a, a new journey, really. Into um, and we're seeing some new opportunities for the future. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you've made very good progress in a relatively short amount of time. So, so well done to you and the team for doing that. Um, which brings me Thank on you. to the future. What 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 are your plans and and where do you see this going, Chris? Um. So for local. Um, what we've realised is that actually we have a great piece of technology that powers for local, um, and what, um, Unicodo we're a B two B business, so we we sell our technology to businesses. We don't typically sell our technology to smaller businesses and independent businesses, and and have a consumer proposition that for local is. So it's not our area of expertise. So what we're looking at doing is. It's having kind of for local as an entry point into Unicodo. So there's the high end, um, you know, the the entry point into Unicodo, which is for local, and then the the enterprise end of of Unicodo, which is provided to big e-commerce companies. So it's great for actually adding more to our product stack and a bigger range to our product stack, and and essentially having solutions that cover small independent businesses through to big big in big enterprise e-commerce companies um, so that's kind of where we're taking it and so we're looking for partner organizations which could be bids could be councils could be um, industry bodies for certain sectors so you know um, hairdresser associations um, the, the organizations that are sort of backing pubs and restaurants and cafes getting those kind of organizations on board to have a version of for local just for themselves that just lists their members and essentially providing a white label experience where the for local platform is is co-branded with these organizations so that they can take this to their 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 members and their their um, audiences that they have 
um, and and help us sort of drive the full open, the scale that we'd like to get out of full open and the technology we we built. Um, so that's a really exciting thing we're we're trying to tackle right now. But also there's the core business Unicodo. There's our still there's still our core clients that we need to support in a in a in a great way. Um, you know we've we've lost a little bit of client a, a few clients, but there's still a great core um, client list that we have and. They're really, um, they have high demands of us and we need to keep supporting them. That's why it's been so important to keep, keep the team together and keep the team productive and, and delivering for our clients every single day. Um, so, yeah, and we've got so, so many great plans for the Unicodo core technology set for those um, sort of medium and large organisations that use us in e-commerce um, to add more sophisticated tools, more advanced reporting, um, and just generally sort of solve every challenge those clients bring to us every single day and um, you know, provide an answer to all of their problems, really. Uh, so it's, a, it's an incredibly exciting time. There's a lot of opportunity that now comes from, um, from potentially a recession. I've seen the 2008-2009 recession go incredibly well for internet businesses that are focused on driving a bigger e-commerce operation. And it was a year. It was a period of growth back in the last recession, and I don't see it being any different to to, to now. If we do get into a recession, online shopping grows every single year, and um, when times are tough and people have a little bit less in their pocket to spend, um, it's more important for their money to go further. So e-commerce companies need to be competitive, and savvy shoppers will be searching around for discounts. Um, and promotional codes and voucher codes, which Unicode powers is, is a key key uh, tactic to use and by these retailers. So we see uh, this as a period of growth now, uh, long into the future to, to scale the business further and, and uh, have a really exciting growth period. Brilliant, thank you for that, Chris. Well, it sounds like there's lots of exciting things to come and, and, and lots of plans. So we will definitely be watching you and uh, following you on that journey and hopefully speaking to you about it uh, further along the line. Um, and lastly, it'd be great for you to tell us the top three things that you are missing about Croydon, because you're obviously based in Croydon. So what are yeah. you missing at the moment? Uh, number one is, is having a team around us, face to face in the office. Um, our office, you know, we really miss having the team in the office and the office we've got. We've got a nice space at the, the Sussex Innovation Centre. Um, we've got a good couple of rooms. We've got some nice, you know, meeting space. We've got a nice facilities to use. Um, and it's a shame to not be using them to the full capacity. And I know Saffron from the, for the, from the Sussex Innovation Centre will be, um, will, will be appreciative if I give a little plug for them. But they're, they're great, you know, essentially landlords for us. And um, great supporters of our business um, and I know there's you know there's space there for other organizations to go and get that support right now at, at the innovation center um, so yeah it's the team in the office space is, is the number one thing really um, and then just the location of being in Croydon it's um, we're up and down the country up and down around London on a regular basis and actually there's not a better place to be as a business um, I think um, for value for money wise and, and location than Croydon because we can get everywhere fast and they've got clients the other side of London and in Luton and I'm going up there all the time and you know it's easier to get to Luton from Croydon than it is from um, you know West London East London um, or even the city sometimes so you know we love we love love Croydon for, for that ability um, and and our kind of drinking establishment of of choice which is it's probably the Cronks Brewery in the Box Park. Um, I see the Box Park opening very, very soon, which is exciting. Good to be back in there. Got to get down to Cockfighter for one of their uh, chicken burgers. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing um, but also get into Cronks Brewery to, to their bar in the Box Park and have a beer again, because that would be, it tastes, it tastes better out of the pump than out of the bottle. So can't wait <laughs> to get back in there. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Chris. It's been really great to chat about to you and, and hear what you guys are doing. And we wish you all the best in that journey and, and hope to catch up again soon. Thank you very much. It's been great to speak to you today. Thanks for your support. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers.